Knowing how to correctly add a background can make your render a lot more realistic. Here are several ways of adding a background to your render in V-Ray. Let's get started. Number 1. Sunlight and Procedural Clouds The V-Ray sunlight is the default way for lighting up your scene, but it lacks a background for the sky, so it'll always look a bit empty. However, in V-Ray 6, there is now an option to add procedural clouds to your scene. This is located in the sun settings. Go down to clouds and click this toggle to enable it. As a bonus tip, when doing an interactive render, you can hide unnecessary objects in your model to make it run faster. For example, you can see I have organized different objects on different layers or tags. And since we are only focusing on the sky and the sunlight, I can just hide the unneeded objects and leave only the house visible. I also use V-Ray Fur for the grass, so I will turn that off as well. This will make our interactive render a lot faster. Continuing with the cloud settings, first is the density, which controls the amount of clouds. At the maximum value, it would be very cloudy. This is great for creating an overcast sky. Next is the variety slider, which controls the variety of the clouds in space and shape. The next slider is the serious amount, which controls the amount of high altitude clouds. If you can't see the difference in the render, just use the eye tool and then look up. These clouds up high are the serious clouds. Next is the height slider, which controls how high the clouds are above the ground. Next, you can use this slider to make the clouds very thick or very thin. The next two sliders can be used to offset the clouds in the X and Y direction. Notice that whenever the clouds are moved, sometimes we lose the sunlight. That is because the clouds might block the sun like this. I really like this feature because it's really similar to real life. I do not want the sunlight to be blocked, so I will just reset the X and Y positions. Finally, the last setting is the ground shadows. When it's turned on, you will see the cloud shadows on the ground like so. You can see the shadows move as we adjust the position of the clouds too. I personally like this effect, so I will leave it turned on. There are many other settings, but these are only needed when doing an animation, so I will not cover these in this video. There we go, now I can unhide the VR4 grass and all the other objects in the scene. Then I can set the camera back to my main view. If the render is too dark, then you can change the advanced camera parameters to make it brighter. I have a video explaining all of these parameters, so if you want to learn more about them, then follow the link in the description box. If it's too bright and we lose the details in our sky, then we can add an exposure layer to our VA frame buffer window. And it's just a slider so that it reduces the highlight burns like so. However, doing this too much will make the image lose details, so we can increase our exposure and contrast a bit to make it look more balanced. That looks good. Note that we can always go back and change the cloud density so that we can have a cloudy sky or a clear sky whenever we want. Also, you can change the cloud settings to quickly turn a daytime render to a sunset render. Since the clouds have volume, you can see that the colors from the sunset affect the clouds in a dynamic way. Instead of using the shadow settings, you can also give the sun a custom orientation by setting the horizontal and vertical angles here. Number 2. Using Dome Light in HDRI To correctly use a dome light, first we need to turn off the sunlight by clicking this toggle or you can click on the sunlight icon on the light list. Note that even after the sunlight is turned off, there might still be light from the environment. So we will need to turn off the orientation and change the shadow setting so that it's nighttime. Now we can add a dome light, which will need an HDRI image to work. You can find HDRI images on lots of websites. I often use Polyhaven. After it's imported, you can change the intensity here. Then we will also enable Use Transform. This will lock the HDRI texture to the orientation of the VR Dome widget, so we can control the background of the dome light like so. The KS Cosmos library also has HDRIs that you can use. First, just download the one you want. 
then you will see it in the texture asset. Now you can right click and copy this texture, then paste it in the texture slot of the dome light. Then we can adjust the intensity and rotation until it looks good. In some cases, the HDRI background looks good in one angle, but unfortunately the lighting that comes with the HDRI is not very fitting for the scene. In that case, you can combine the background of the HDRI and the lighting of the sunlight to make it look a lot better. To do that, first you will need to turn off every setting in the dome light and leave only the effect reflection parameter. Now only the background is visible, but the dome light doesn't affect the scene. Then we can turn the sunlight back on and make changes to it until we're happy with the result. The issue with dome lights is that sometimes the object can look like it's folding like this. However, in VR6, there's also a new option called Finite Dome, which if enabled, the dome light becomes a finite half dome with the ground. Here are the settings that you can use to adjust the size of the dome light. This is a process of trial and error because it depends on the HDR image. As you can see, with the finite dome option, the model is embedded into the HDRI. However, the problem is that the object in the render doesn't have any shadows. There's a trick to add the shadows to the car. First, add an infinite plane. Next, we need to create a generic material and make the diffuse color white. Then we need to create a wrapper material. Now I will select the infinite plane and apply the wrapper material to it. Then I will set the base color to the generic material that we just created earlier. And turn on matte. We also need to change this setting to a different option so that the reflection is fixed. Finally, we need to turn on shadows. And there we go, now we have a realistic model embedded in the HDRI. Sometimes I cannot find an HDR image that is a good fit for my scene. In that case, I can use a custom image as the background while using very sunlight to light my scene. First, let's import our background image. To do that, we can simply drag in the image like so. Now we can rotate, position, and scale it. However, you can see that it's not showing in the render. To fix this, we need to explode the image, then we can make it into a group again to keep our model organized. Now let's go back to our main view. Then let's lock the render viewport using this button. This will allow us to move around in SketchUp while adjusting the background position without changing the position of the render window. I think that looks pretty good. However, you can see that the background is quite dark. To fix this, we need to sample this material and edit it in the viewer asset editor. I will change the preview mode to wall close up to make it easier to see our background. Now click here and add an emissive layer. However, the material has turned into white, so let's copy our diffuse map and paste it in the color texture slot of the emissive layer. There we go, now we can change the intensity to make it fit your scene. For this scene, I will leave the intensity at 1. And there we go, those are some tips for adding a realistic background in V-Ray. If you're looking for more tutorials on V-Ray, I would suggest you take a look at this class on Skillshare, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in creative skills like design, illustration, and many more. The premium membership will get you a limited access so you can join any classes and communities that you like. But as part of this sponsorship, Skillshare has set up a 1 month free trial for the first 1000 people who join using this link. So you can take all of the classes completed for free. If that's something you're interested in, then go to the link in the description box. With the membership, you can take courses like this very five for SketchUp Masterclass. This is a comprehensive class that walks you step by step on how to render a kitchen in VRA for SketchUp. The author will teach you many things like setting up the camera, lighting up your scene, and creating many different types of materials, and finally editing it in Photoshop. I will also leave a link to a few useful classes that I'm taking. One of them is the productivity for creators. For me, time management is a skill that I really want to improve in 2023. My wife and I just had a baby, so learning how to make time in my life for both my family and my career is extremely important to me. Also, I'm extremely lucky because I get to work from home, doing what I love, and making a living out of it. Some of you might be aiming for that as well. If that's the case, then I would recommend this class called Going Freelance, Building and Branding Your Own Success. 
And again, the first 1000 people who use this link can show Skillshare today for free. Anyway, that's all for today guys. Check out this video if you want to learn how to add backgrounds in Photoshop. Stay inspired guys and I'll see you next time.